Hi, hi. Today I want to tell you a little bit about the life of Louise Brooks. I just finished this painting that I've been working on this week, so it's a bit sticky in my hands. I'm even like, as I'm holding it up, I'm wondering, is this too soon? So I'm gonna have paint all over my hands by the end of this, probably. But um, Louise Brooks, um, I'm not saying that my picture looks exactly like her, but hopefully she's somewhat recognizable to you because uh, she was the, the flapper of Hollywood in the 1920s. She was the girl who really embodied that spirit and that look. She had the short little haircut, um, she had the right body. She was a dancer, so she would dance a lot in her movies. And um, she had this real modern free spirit, um, which was kind of um, idealized at the time at least through films and books and in our own history, we, we tend to idealize that, that period of parties and um, just the, the attitudes were very free and modern in the Roaring Twenties. And um, Louise Brooks, she was very young when she got started. She was a young dancer. I think her mother had her, well, she had her dancing as a young girl, but I think she started dancing like at 14, 15. And, um, moved to New York and kind of became, well, I think she was naturally sophisticated, but she, she developed a look and then Hollywood discovered her. She got married to a producer and she was just all in. But in some ways she kind of just wanted to have a good time. She was a pleasure seeker in many ways and she loved all the parties and knowing who was who and having affairs and knowing who had was having affairs. And, um, you know, some people would say she's the one who knew where the bodies were hid in Hollywood. And that's gonna come out later, but um, not literal bodies. Um, anyway, Louise Brooks also had a lot of, um, well, she, she had an attitude that I think now we would, um, we would admire. Like she asked for raises and she said, no, I'm not going to do that film. And, but at the time, um, because she was a girl and even though she was a star, Hollywood didn't like that. And, um, she burned a lot of bridges in her, in her young life. And, um, ultimately her big break came, well, she was already famous, I should say, but her, her, her lasting legacy came through when she went to Germany to film a film called Pandora's Box, which was going to be directed by this amazing German director. And remember, Germany was in the 1920s was very avant-garde, like the cabaret scene. And again, we have the flappers and the dancers but they were much more progressive, I think, than what we would see in Hollywood at the time. Um, just like Paris would have been at that time. And um, so she made this film and you can see it on YouTube if you want to, you can see all her films on YouTube, um, Pandora's Box. It's not a children's movie. She, um, she basically play, plays a prostitute in it, but she is so amazing to watch. She's just, you, you can see it, it's just, a, she's like a star person. I mean, I've said that before about Marilyn Monroe, but just the way she looked on film, the black and white, there were silent films. It was all just in the eyes and the way she moved. She was a very special person. Um, and I've been watching some of her films this week and, and reading up on her and stuff. And I've just been amazed at how modern she was. Anyway, I'm getting kind of long winded about this, but um, she went back to Hollywood after making a couple of those films and they shunned her. They didn't, you know, they, they nobody wanted to work with her. They told, they started saying that her voice was bad, even though she hadn't made any talking movies yet, but everything was moving to talkies now. And that was a way to, um, you know, I guess just put her in her place. So she had to sort of start up again at the beginning Beginning. Um, she started another film by John with John Wayne, but she didn't have the same haircut and she was older and nobody recognized her in it. And so she, she left, she retired. And a few other things happened. She kind of was never heard from again until um, the late fifties and some film historians discovered her there in the East Village, completely 
um, unrecognizable. Uh, she was alcoholic and she was burnt out and she just didn't look at all like the star that she used to be. But they had rediscovered Pandora's box and they were, um, you know, they were saying this is such a, a work of genius. And so they kind of drew her out of her shell and had got her to start talking, helped her clean up. She saw her old films that she hadn't seen since she was, well, she'd never seen them before. Um, and she realized that she was actually quite a good actress, where this whole time she had been thinking that she wasn't that good, that she wasn't that beautiful, um, because she didn't know how to act, she knew how to dance. And she realized she had been being herself. She had just been being Louise. And um, so she started to, in her older age, she started to write um, articles about film and her old history um, in Hollywood. She was, that's when she started name dropping and, you know, telling where the, the bodies were buried in some ways. But um, she remembered everything. And then she sort of got um, a resurgence of, of fame during that part of her life in her 70s. And she wrote a book called Lulu in Hollywood. And you can read it now. And I've gone so long about her, but I'm gonna keep it because um, there's a lot to say. Um, just leaving you with one quote that's really funny that she said. She said that, um, I have a gift for engaging people, but if I ever bore you, it will be with a knife. So, Louise Brooks. <laughs>